the data processing. Week 8, second video lecture. So I was showing you guys the authentication process. Before we s continue looking at error messages and stuff like that that was not working, let us implement very quickly this sign-out, because the sign-out is going to be something very simple to do. Logged in, and you are in the timesheet list, for instance. You should provide a logout, right? And the logout is going to be taken care of by a controller. In fact, it's going to be a very simple controller. One that doesn't even ask for information. When you log out, does it ask you who you are? No. It's just a link where you click on that link and it will log you out. So we're going to create the sign out controller. Timesheet list, in fact, it's going to be even much more simpler than the timesheet list controller. Sign out controller. It's going to use the application security manager because we need to be able to go in the application tell the application security manager to get rid of the employee in the session. And we're going to have to have a success view. What's going to be the success view when you log out? Anybody? Sign in. Sign in. What's going to be the view, the successful view when you log out? Sign in. You log out, you're not allowed to view anything else. Or the index. Home page. Yeah. Okay? So, and we're going to have to implement the handle request. What does the handle request do? Say, okay, application security manager, remove employee from the session. And I'm passing you the request. Return model and view, get success view. Done. That's the sign out. Literally, that's the sign out. Okay? What do we have to do on the configuration end for this to work? Well, we're going to need some URL, right? Let's call it sign out that indicates that we want to sign out. It's going to be taken care of by the sign out controller. And the sign on controller is going to be a controller that's it. Where we inject the application security manager and the success view is a redirection to sign in that HTM. That's it. JSP. We got to have a sign out. See that sign out? What's going to be the URL to it? Sign out.htm. That's what it's going to allow us to sign out. This is the console. Oops. I saw something on the console that it didn't like. No bean name sign out controller is defined. And you're probably right. Again, it's one of those misspells. Sign out controller. Make sure that it's called sign out controller. Okay, project clean. Run it. Looks good now. So we go in here.
We click on login. That's the wrong one. I have to change that menu so that it points to the .htm. I'm going to sign in as Mike Dover, Rapid Java. Sign in. I see all the timesheets for Mike Dover. Then I sign out. Watch this. This is what it's supposed to happen. When I go back, it's supposed to try to get me the timesheet list again. But this time, it's going to go and look who is logged in. And it should be nobody. What should it do? It should actually send me back to sign in. But it's not doing that. In fact, this is what I'm getting. Timesheet list controller handle request. It has problems in the handle request of timesheet list controller. If I go to where it's actually having problems, here it is. That there is an employee. assumes that there is an employee in the session. Hey, application security man, get me the employee from the session. Put it in here. What if it's there's no such? So that's wrong. Okay? That's the first thing that I just found out that it's wrong. So we're going to have to change the timesheet list controller so that it handles the request differently. In fact, you know what? If I start putting code in here, if my employee is null, then I know that it, there's no uh, employee in the session, therefore I cannot handle, I cannot successfully show the timesheet list, so I'm going to have to create an error message in here and send it back to the user. And I start putting a whole bunch of code in the timesheet list controller that is not appropriate, that it's not the responsibility of the timesheet list controller. And I'm going to have to do the same thing with enter hours. What if somebody logs out and tries to come in into enter hours? Then I have to go and tell the application security manager, get me the employee from the session, and then find out, hey, is the employee? In the oh, there's no employee in the session. Now what I'm going to do? I'm going to have to create this error message. And then, as you can see, I'm going to end up with a whole bunch of duplicate code. Code in the timesheet list controller, code in the enter hours controller, that all it does is handle the fact that nobody's logged in. Why don't I just isolate that and put it under some class responsibility? And this class responsibility is going to make sure that it verifies before it does absolutely anything. Before I try timesheet list controller, before I try entering hours, before I try any of the functionality that I have to be authenticated as, why don't we just create this class that is going to intercept the request, verify that you are logged in. If you're not logged in, it will redirect you to sign in. If you are logged in, you can keep on doing your business. Go to timesheet list, go to whatever. Okay? And notice that I made emphasis on intercept because that's exactly what it's called in the Spring Framework. 
is called an interceptor. So we're going to create an interceptor and this is how we're going to handle it. This is our configuration. Notice that we have absolutely every single URL in the same section. What is that section? It's the section of a mapping between the URL and the controllers. Okay, that's fine. Except that there are actually two types of URLs. The one type of URL, I do not care if I'm logged in or not. And there's specifically only two URLs in our system that I do not care whether I'm logged in or not. They are sign in and sign out. Before I sign in, do I care if I'm sign in? No. Before I sign out, do I care if I'm not signed out? No. You cannot sign out somebody that is already signed out. It's signed out. <laughs> okay? And then the rest of the URLs in our system, and by the rest of the URLs, I mean these two so far, but eventually we're going to have more time she lists and in two hours. I do care if I'm signing or not. And I'm going to put the responsibility of verifying that I'm signing or sign out to one individual as opposed to putting that same code over and over again under the same control under the, all the different controllers. You got it? So this is the example in which copy and paste is not acceptable. If you create a, a, a piece of code that verifies whether you are logged in or not, and then you keep copying and pasting this same code over and over again throughout the different controllers, you know there's, you're doing something wrong. Because if something changes in the way that you verify whether you're signing or not, guess in how many places you're going to have to modify this code. 10, 15, 100, depending on how many controllers you have created in the system. As opposed to just extract that code into a class and make that class responsible for it, and then create what it's typically called in the simple URL handle and mapping framework, it's called an interceptor. And you can actually pass a list of interceptors. Notice we can have more than one reference here. We can pass a list of interceptors to the simple UR handler. What is this going to do? All it's this going to do is the following. Oh, I see timesheet list dot htm in the URL. I'm going to tell this controller to handle it. But oops, hold on a second. I have an interceptor. This guy has to run first before timesheet list controller gets its um, chance. Because it's handler, it's a handler interceptor adapter or whatever that's called in the framework. Okay, It's an abstract adapter class for the handler interceptor interface. Basically that's what it is. And all, all you have to do is basically overwrite the pre-handle um, um, method and the pre-handle that's where you will ensure that the user is logged in. So there's a pre-handle method which uses the application security manager to ensure that the user is logged in. Okay. Let me verify from the handle interceptor. See that? There's a pre-handle, 
there's a post handle, and there's an after completion. And you can override any one of them. If you override the pre-handle, then your code, that code that is in the pre-handle, will get executed before the controller takes over. In the post handle, that code will be run after the controller takes over. Request has been completed. So right now, what we need to do is we need to override the pre-handle. So what are we going to do in the pre-handle? We're going to say, OK, Application Security Manager, get the employee from the session. Cast it into an employee. Here it is. If, notice that this is the exact same code that I'll have to write over and over again in every single controller to make sure that the, somebody is signing or not. If the employee is equal to null, guess what? You know that nobody is signing. Right? What are you going to do? You're going to actually handle the response. And notice that the request and the response are the objects that are being handled by all servlets. Remember? Well, in this guy, the pre-handle is handling both as well. The request and the response. If it finds, if it finds that the employee is equal to null, it's going to tell the response to redirect itself to the signing page. What is the signing page? Oh, it's a local property that has a getter and setter. Wait a minute, that means that I can inject also the name of the signing page. See that? It's a property, has no initialization here, it's a getter and setter. See this? We're going to say the interceptor is going to be this bean, but we haven't defined who that bean is. Here is us defining the bean. The HTTP request interceptor, which is handled by this class, let's make sure that it exists. Yes, it does exist. This guy, yep. It's going to have a signing page. What's the signing page? value signing that htm and it will also get the application security manager injected into it ha huh. so notice what we have done now and i'm going to run it again oops i don't like those i do not like those Line 20, an XML document uh, from server resource da, 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 needed is invalid. There are multiple occurrences of the ID. Oh, you're right. You are right, sir. Line 20 in the XML. It doesn't like that. Line 20. Notice that we have a URL map and a URL map. This is going to be called URL map authenticated. In other words, all the URLs in which you need to be authenticated will be put in here. The other ones that you do not need to be authenticated will be put in this group. Got it? So we're using two simple URL handle mappings. One for ones that handle interceptors and the other one that do not handle any interceptors. Clean. And now we go into our online timesheet system. And I'm going to sign in. Sign in as number one, Mike Dover, Rapid Java. Sign in. Here it is. Sign out. Go back. Refresh. What happened? See what happens when I try going to a timesheet list? Happens when I try a timesheet list. I get redirected to sign in. Uh, Jay Kumar, 
um, what is it? Visual Pat. Sign in. Sign out. Yeah, look at this. One. Um, rapid, rapid Java. Sign in. And take a new window. Okay. So I'm gonna have another window here. I'm gonna do local host, eighty eighty. Tamex Web. Sign in that HTM. What happened? What's that? I'm already signing, but, but as who? There are two different. They're two different browsers. Why? <laughs> now I'm going to sign out here. So I'm being redirected to sign in, right? I'm going to refresh here. What is going on? Now, to make things worse, we have to fix also the enter hours. Remember the enter hours? Enter hours, we're, all, we're always creating the um, the new timesheet for employee one and that's wrong what we have to do is we actually have to ask the application security manager to get the employee out of the session and put in here that employee ID so I'm gonna fix that for you guys alright for next week not for next week for two weeks from today I need you guys to complete your website with static HTMLs. Absolutely all the website look and feel with fake content HTML. And the ones that actually have data coming out of the database fix it so that instead of asking for the HTML it just asks for the HTM. That's it. But I need you to provide authentication. So I need you to turn in sign in, sign out, interceptor, sign in, sign out, interceptor, application security manager, and you can pretty much get it out of my code. Authentication, sign in and sign out, and the rest of the HTML pages that are static. So I should be able to go into your index.jsp and look navigate through it on their menu and I'm either presenting with fake data which is okay but if you have implemented that functionality I should be able to be presented with real data coming out of the database Got it? and please update your wiki so at this point we should cross out this sign-in, sign-out. 